top three things that are preventing you from starting that business today. One, you just talking. Point blank period. You have no plan of action. You have wrote down nothing. You have done nothing. Two, you have a lack of resources. Yes, you are focused on your lack of resources and you're not focusing on the things that you actually have. And number three thing that's stopping you is your fear and your anxiety. You haven't conquered it in your personal life and you definitely ain't going to conquer it in business. Top of the top, right back in here, man, with another one, man. It's your favorite CEO, CEO Hockley, man, back in the building with another video, man. And in this video, we're going to discuss the top three things why I believe you are scared to start that business and you haven't started that business, man. We're going to get right into it. But before we get started, like always, hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe, and leave a comment down in the comment section, man. If you have an opinion about some of the things that are stopping you or where I'm wrong or where I'm right at, let's have that discussion in the comment section. And, you know, I'll get back at you. But with that, let's roll right into it, man. Off top, man, the top three things that are preventing you from starting your business today is you just talking. Yeah, point blank period. You just talking. That's it. It sounds good to you. That's why you haven't started. It sounds like you getting things done. And it's a um it's a study on that in, in psychology about why you shouldn't say what you're gonna do. Yes, it's a study on why you shouldn't say what you're going to do. And the problem with that is it releases dopamine in your mind that you actually done it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the more you talk about it, the more you trick yourself into believing that you are getting something done. And that's the first reason why you haven't started that business or that idea haven't left your mind. You are sitting around talking about it. And when I say talking about it, I'm not saying you shouldn't, quote unquote, speak things into existence. That's not what I'm talking about. Yes, you should speak things into existence, but you should do less talking and more planning a course of action. Less talk talking and more planning of a course of action. You just talking, you telling people about it. Yeah, man, I got this idea, man, you know. We could do this, we could do that, and then it's going to take off. You know, I seen what Cash Money did. I seen what Jay-Z did. I seen what this person did, and this is all you got to do. It's just that simple, you know. When I was in jail, it was like that. But in, in, in jail or in prison, it's a little different. Everybody in jail got ideas. Everybody in jail are magnificent. Why? They not on drugs. They have time to think. They have time to read and they could observe things that's going on in the free world from a totally different perspective of someone that's actually in the free world. It's like being a spectator in the game and saying what LeBron should have did or what Michael Jordan could have done or what this player should have threw or passed or Tom Brady. It's like a spectator in the game and you just talking. Yes, you may be right. You may be accurate, but you're not dealing with the elements of the environment or the situation to know what you would do or how it should have been done. You just spectating. And a lot of us do that with business. A lot of that, a lot of us do that with, with hustles. A lot of that, a lot of us do that with our own ideas. We are our own spectators of the thoughts we are having and we just talking. That's the number one reason most of you all haven't started your business or haven't produced anything from them ideas that you're telling coworker, your mom, your wife, your girlfriend. You're just sitting back spectating your idea and you think you're right. Because in psychology, the more you're spectating on it and the more you're convincing yourself that you are right, the more you are tricking yourself that you are getting something done. You haven't had, you haven't took no action. You just talking. You know what I'm saying? And we're saying that you got to have a plan of action. It's one thing to talk about the thing. The next thing is, okay, what does the first step look like? What does the last step look like? Yes. So with this, I'm going to try to help you overcome these three obstacles. The first thing is that you're just talking. 
And talking is bad because you are convincing yourself that you are actually getting something done. Scientifically, it has been proven that you are convincing yourself through dopamine releases in your brain that you are actually getting something done and you haven't took a plan of action. So to overcome that, you need to have a plan of action. Think about what the first plan of action looked like and the last plan of action looked like. You may be wrong, but at least see that, understand that, and have a visual for what it looks like at the beginning, what it looks like at the end, at the middle, if, if possible, if need be. But you need to have a course of action. You need to transform your thoughts into words. Write stuff down. Listen. Writing stuff down is the most powerfulest tool that we have in our ability. The ability to be able to transform your thoughts into a physical expression is magical. Listen to what I'm telling you. It is magical. So quit talking and start writing some of these things down. Some of these things you would like to see. Some of these course of actions that you need to take. And just explore your thoughts in your mind on paper. Explore them on paper, and that will lead you closer and closer into revealing or, as, as we say, speaking the thing into existence. Start writing your ideas out. So that's number one, right? you just talking, and I just gave you a solution to overcome that just talking part. Quit tricking yourself that you're getting something done. You're not, buddy. you just freestyle rapping, so to speak. <laughs> okay, the second reason is that prevents us from getting started is a lack of resources, right? So the second thing you do, you do all this talking about about um this car company or about, oh, I could start the new Tesla. I could be the new DJ Cali. Or I could do this or I could do that, right? You're doing all this um, talking and playing smart because it's sounding good and, and you sexualizing and romanticizing this idea in your mind and you making love to this thought in your mind but you're not doing nothing but then the reason that you're not moving forward is not only that you didn't have you're not making a plan or you're not writing it down you start realizing you don't really have the money because you're looking at someone else's end result L listen to what i'm saying people be like oh i know what netflix did you know, they took everything digital. You could stream. You could watch it. I'm going to do a Netflix for the hood. Many people have tried to do this. Damon Dash is currently doing it with Dash Studios. Different people are trying to do this black Netflix thing, right? Well, here's the problem, man. Netflix is giving $6 billion a year to lose on Netflix. Listen to what I'm saying. You can't be the next Netflix unless you could go eight years or seven years without making no money and just spending investors monies on this idea to get everybody to go digital we don't have that capability so we can't be the next the next netflix i'm not trying to defeat the idea but you're looking at netflix in result and saying hey i can do that whoa bro rewind the tape look at where they start and how they got there they went seven years with making no money before even making a profit. Bro, we can't go two weeks without making no money, dude. What you mean? You mean I got to put up my savings into this and my savings going to go away and I have to keep going for seven more years? Stop it, bro. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. So the second reason why you don't get started is that you understand that you have a lack of resources and you don't have what you need only because you are looking at the resources you needed based on someone else's end result. You are looking at the thing making money and running and you like, well, damn, man, I, I got the idea, but I need this or I need that. And then you can't get past that point when you realize you don't have the resources that that end result have. No. Go back to where they started. You have everything Jeff Bezos had when he started Amazon in 98 and 96. You got a computer. You got electricity. You have a brain. And you have a can of spray paint where you can spray paint Amazon on a sign. You have everything Jeff Bezos had when he got started. So quit looking at their end result and thinking, I don't have the money. I have the lack of resources. I have this. If your idea is as great as you say it is, the money and the resources will find you once you put in the work. Let me say that again. 
If your idea is as good as you say it is, the money and the resources will find you once you start putting in the work. That's just what it is. Um, Sam Walton, the great Sam Walton that started Walmart, um, a book that I read. I'm going to post here. So y'all should check out Made in America. Sam Walton said in his book that, hey, um, um, capital is everywhere. Ideas and work ignorant isn't. Capital is everywhere. They print the money. The right ideas and the right work ignorant is not present. That's what's missing. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what's missing in the market today. Capital is everywhere. So quit looking at someone in results and judging their end results on your lack of resources and that's preventing you from not starting that's number two okay number three the big 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 thing that's keeping you from starting your million dollar idea your business today here's the big big thing that's stopping everybody that got the whole world on hold it's called anxiety and fear yes anxiety and fear is stopping you and preventing you from producing that idea of manifesting these dreams that you have. Well, anxiety and fear is real. And the, and, and the cold part is this. I, me growing up in a poverty-stricken environment, me growing up in a loving, um, a, a loving environment also, I really didn't understand anxiety. Yes, me. Robert Hockley, a person that has overcome poverty and overcome prison imprisonment, overcome, overcame the streets and all that. I didn't understand that the things that I was dealing with in that environment, in that condition, was a thing called anxiety and fear. Because my reaction to that was totally different from what I see normal people react to different things that create anxiety or give them fear. So give you a little history. When I was a kid, um, I would get in trouble, do things that kids do, like like we all did. And um, um, my mother would be like, I'm going to whoop you. I'm going to whoop your ass. That's what my Tracy be like. I'm going to whoop your ass. You're going to get a whooping. You failed in school or you did this in school. You're getting your ass whooped. And she would be like, um, go to your room and, and, and I'm going to whoop your ass. Don't come out that room till I tell you to come out and you got an ass whooping coming. Well, I would go inside the room and I'll post a wait until she's ready to whoop me. But I couldn't. Listen, man, I would go in the room, and I remember this as a kid. I would go in the room, and I would be so nervous. I would start sweating. I would start thinking about what's going on to where I would just come out the room and ask my mama, hey, can I get my whooping? Nah, I can't. I don't want to wait. Can I get my whooping? Nah. And that was always odd for her, just, just odd in general. But at the time, I didn't understand this is the way my mind and my biological makeup responded to anxiety. I didn't even know that was anxiety I was facing when I was in the room. Yeah, I had to come out and face the thing in which I feared. That was my biological makeup. Nobody taught me that. And later in life, as I endured more anxiety, like going, getting in trouble, um, um, having ops or enemies and things like that, I always encountered the thing that I feared. I never ran from the thing that I feared. When I, when, when I became scared, I became active. And I realize now later in life that that's not a given. That is just my biological makeup. A lot of people become scared and become paralyzed. They, they, they cry. They become immobile. They don't know what to think. They are terrified. And in that manner, fear is able to overcome them. And they are be able to be manipulated, used, or uh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? They're scared to leave their job. They don't know what, what it looks like if they leave their job. They don't know how to make more money. They don't know if I miss a bill payment. Uh, all these people gonna cut off my lights. They gonna take my car. This anxiety or this fear is what's controlling us. And this is the top thing that is stopping you from starting your business. You haven't learned how to deal with anxiety. Running a business or having an idea is an anxiety feel business. It is anxiety and fear feel. The first anxiety you have is that you done did all that talking. You done did all that convincing, trying to tell people about your idea and why it worked and why your food or your fries is better than McDonald's fries. But now it's time to put up and you done made a couple samples and a couple plates and people didn't like it. But now it's time to cook and it's time to lose. What do I mean? It's time to cook a bunch of food 
and see if it really works. And you're going to have to learn through losing. You don't want to lose. Yes, that's right. You haven't started that business because you have a fear and anxiety of losing. And you don't understand that losing and anxiety is part of winning. Point blank period. Michael Jordan has a famous quote. I, I'm not going to quote it verbatim, but I'm going to put it up here on the screen. He was like, you know, I miss many a shots. Nobody count those. You know what I'm saying? But you can't win the game if you don't take the shot. You got to be able to take the shot to win a game. Win, lose, or draw. That's another phrase, man. I'm going to give y'all that. That's a phrase in the penitentiary, man, when you have to stand up to your fears or stand up into someone bullying you or someone trying to take something from you. You have to have the mindset of win, lose, or draw. That's what got me through prison. That's what gets you through prison. Face your fears. Win, lose, or draw. It's not about if I won or if I lost. None of that matters. All three equals the same result. You're not going to do what you want to do to me willingly. It's going to have to be some conflict and some friction to get what you want out of me. And that, my friends, makes you stronger, make you better. And that's how you have to approach business. It's a win, lose, or draw mentality. You haven't started because obviously you don't have that mentality because you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Like I say in another video, most businesses fail within the first three years. Out of those businesses that get past the three years, in five years, the few that are remaining, they fail. And out of the ones that get past five years and 10 years, only one or two businesses survive or stay around. That's just the reality of starting a business and doing a business. It is a losing game that you have to be strong to survive. Starting a business is a losing game that you have to be strong to survive and you haven't started because the fear and anxiety is too much for you. That is the reality. You can overcome that fear. Um, Warren Buffett said himself in, in, in um, books and one of his famous quotes, to overcome risk, you have to increase knowledge. And if you increase your knowledge and your understanding for a thing, you will overcome that fear and that anxiety once you start addressing or seeing that thing. That's it. Start dealing with it. Start learning how to lose, how to take a loss. A real winner knows how to take a loss. That's just what it is. You want to be cool, though. You you are scared of what people are going to think about you when you roll out your fry idea, when you roll out this. People going to laugh. <laughs> oh, man, that ain't, nigga, that ain't McDonald's, bro. That ain't, and you are scared of that, and that will defeat you. That will hurt your character. That will hurt your emotions. You're soft. That's why you haven't started this business or this great idea. And you're fooling everybody by talk. I mean, you're fooling nobody by talking about it. You're only fooling yourself and thinking that you are being successful by having these discussions with people, having these meetings and meet up and these seminars and having all that shit going on to be like, hey, you're just romancing this idea. But in fact, fear and anxiety has prevented you from turning your life around. That's just what it is. And you're not alone. It does that to millions and millions of people. The people that are on top have conquered their fears and their anxiety. They have conquered those things. And that, my friend, are the top three things that are preventing you from starting that business today. Let's go over them. One, you're just talking. Point blank period. You have no plan of action. You have wrote down nothing. You have done nothing. Two, you have a lack of resources. Yes, you are focused on your lack of resources and you're not focusing on the things that you actually have. And number three things that's stopping you is your fear and your anxiety. You haven't conquered it in your personal life and you definitely ain't going to conquer it in business because that's all business is. It is a fear and anxiety driven organism and you have to conquer it. You have to slay the dragon to be able to be successful in business. So. With that being said, man, I'm going to sign off. I didn't held y'all for too long. Hopefully, this has um, gave you a little understanding about what you're dealing with as you're dealing with, with your business. And if you made it to this part in the video, I would like you to do me a personal favor. You gave me your time, and I want to give you something. I want you to text the word salute. Yes, text the word salute to the number on the screen. Text the word salute to the number on the screen. Once you text this word to the number on the screen, 
I'm going to add you to my personal text messaging service. I'm going to send you my messages and my videos before they come out on YouTube. Don't want to get lost and caught up in this YouTube algorithm, this trolling, this gossip. I don't want to be caught up in that and you can't get the videos. If you made it to this point in the video and you think this message was dope for you, text that word salute to me and I'm going to hit you back and you're going to get my videos first before anybody. Like always, man, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that share, turn on post notifications and leave a comment down in the comment section, man. I'm CEO Hockley. This is CEO Talk. Thanks for tapping in. Count up.